Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Caspio Live. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Let's get that housekeeping item out of the way. So if you are able to hear me, please let me know in the chat window. And we will commence with today's topic. Hey, Judith, Brian, good to see you. Welcome back. Excellent. I'm still not used to just having a mic in front of me. I've always had my headset. So now that I don't have something on my head, it feels a little bit weird. Loud and clear from Tokyo, Japan. All right. Hey, King Kapo. Good to see you as well. All right. So today's topic is going to cover one simple task. Um, simple, but there's some, some clever functionality in there to show and hide elements on the report. And it was brought, by, uh, brought to me by somebody, one of the attendees, uh, who uh, will remain anonymous. I'm not going to mention the name, but hopefully they're here today in today's live stream to, um, to see how we can show and hide data on the report based on a few criteria so one of them is a checkbox and the other one is using a task to check for if 90 days have passed i want to have that report i want to have that um, data show up on the report so i'm doing it quarterly but you can change that to semi-annually or annually depending on how often you want that frequency frequency to be to show and hide the data on the report uh, and i haven't done that before so i thought it was really interesting so if anyone in the live stream has an idea for a trigger or a task send that to me via email because i've done now i think two or three classes on triggers and tasks so we've covered just about all the elements from sending sms to sending email uh, to using uh, copying data from one table to another to joining table we've pretty much exhausted all of the elements that are available in both the triggers and tasks and i'm running out of ideas for what i can do so if there's a specific use case and you want me to cover something for your own needs, send me an email, let me know what the workflow is, and I will talk about it in our live stream. Um, but you can extract what we've done in the past, even though it, not be, it may not be for the exact use case that you might have, you can take the functionality and apply it to your own use case in a different way, because we can subtract data from another table, we can add information to another table, we can do various calculations. So we've covered a lot of different aspects of triggers and tasks but today we haven't done it uh, because we're adding days to a date field so i thought that was clever uh, and something that might be useful to many people in today's live stream so so let me give you a quick rundown on this uh, example here so i have a very simple table uh, report and inside that table what i would like for it to happen here is to have the admin create the report initially where we provide a title, maybe a description. And initially it's going to be a hidden. It's not going to show up on the data page. So it's going to be unchecked. Later on, employees are going to add their notes and then we have the date created field. And then eventually the employee is going to say and check, okay, I completed the report. Uh, I don't, I no longer want to see that on the data page. So when initially the admin submits this report, let's just say a new report for 2023 description, um, submit, all your latest data something like that it's going to be unchecked initially when they submit the form so you know how we can hide the checkbox on the submission form by default leave it unchecked this is going to be empty as well date created let's say now i need to simulate this so it's 90 days after it was created so let's go back three months so maybe june 6th so let's say the admin submitted this report on june 6th and this is going to be unchecked initially now let me show you my task that's running that's going to run in the background. So let's click edit. So I have it running on demand, but you know that we need to change the frequency. Normally I would have this running daily to check against that date created. Uh, and what we're doing is simply updating the report. And I want to show the report to equals to true. So I want to check that box that it's true where, and this is the uh, the condition that we're using, where today's date is greater than or equal to. And then we add 90 days to the date created. So that's the initial field that was um, submitted by the admin, right? When they create the report, we have the date created field. And um, it could be a timestamp or they can manually select the date. But what we're doing is we're adding 90 days to that date and we want greater than or equal to. So if it's 90 days or more since the date created, we want to go ahead and check that box to show the report. Yeah, the recording will be made available uh, right after our live stream today. So you will be able to see it and watch it at your own pace as soon as the live stream ends. Okay, so hopefully 
This is making sense. It's a very simple task where we add 90 days to the original date and we check for today's date that it's greater than or equal to this information that we have on the right hand side. And if that's true, then we want to check the box. So I have to simulate this. I have to run this on demand. So let me go back out to my task. Normally this would be automated in the background, but I will just run it now because it's been over 90 days since the report was created. So we'll run that now. And if I go back to my table, I should be able to see that it's checked now. You can see how it's checked. And then my data page has two filters on it. If I refresh the data page now, you will be able to see that listed because it is checked in the table. So if we look at my data page, So it's based on the, that table that we just looked at and we're filtering the report and then we have two checkboxes and I want the show report. Let me actually show you this one first. So make this report visible if it's checked in the table and that's what the task is doing. So if it goes beyond 90 days, it checks the box automatically and then we're able to see that visible here on the front end. Now, once the employee checks the other box, which is report status, you can see how initially is unchecked. Okay. But once we check that, now it's checked in the table. Therefore, don't show me that report on the data page anymore. So in the details page, you'll be able to see report status and then the employee is going to be able to check that. So if I go into the details page, you can see now I can check to complete that hit update and it's no longer visible until the next period, right? So if the admin comes back, okay, so now we need second quarter for 2023. I create the report initially as the admin. Okay. And then 90 days from that date when the report was created, it's going to be visible again for the employee to fill out. So this is how I worked that out on my end. Um, I know that the person who requested this is here in the live stream today. I'm not going to mention the name, but hopefully this is exactly kind of the, the workflow that was needed um, based on the instructions that I was given. I don't know if, if, if it hits all of the, the needs for that specific workflow. Uh, hopefully it does, but you can send me an email afterwards and let me know. Okay. And then maybe we can expand upon that, but you know, to go back, I know I didn't create the data page for the admin, but normally it would look something like that. We have a submission form based on the report table, create a report just to show you this as well. So we'll just do blue English localization, hit next. Let's include all the fields in the form. So the admin is going to create the title, maybe a description. Uh, show report does not need to be on the form. Okay. Because that's the task is checking against that checkbox. So that does not need to be on the report or on the submission form. Employee notes also does not need to be. Uh, date created. So yeah, this will be a required field. So we need to know when the report was initially created. Now you can manually select the date as the admin, or you can just turn that into a timestamp and it's going to basically stamp the date once that form is submitted. And then for report status, this also doesn't need to be on the submission form either because initially both checkboxes are going to be unchecked. So we can remove that as well. So now when you hit finish and let's say you log in as the admin, you're going to be able to see this form where you create the report. So let's just say title, um, I don't know, second quarter of 2023 description and date created is today. So now today's date is September 13th. So now 90 days from today's date, which will be December 13th or sorry, December 13th or later, uh, that report is going to show up for the employees on the data page for them to fill out and complete. Okay. So it's just a nice way to add days to the actual date that's in the table. And that allows you to check against other things in the table, uh, based on how many days have been added. So it's a very simple task, but it can be used quite frequently in many, many different use cases if you're doing something with the date field. And that's all I have for you today. This might be the quickest live stream that we've had. So unless I get a specific use case from you to do in the live stream, which I'm happy to take, just send me an email, let me know what you would like to do. Because like I said in the beginning, I've covered so many of these different triggers and elements that are available from sending SMS to sending email 
uh, copying data to a different table, joining tables together to grab information from other tables. Even if you want to challenge me with something complex, I can email you back and let you know if it's possible or not possible. So just let me know what your needs are uh, for the triggers and tasks, and I'm more than happy to bring this back uh, in a future live stream session. But this I thought was really clever because I haven't talked about um, the ability to add the date. So if you look at this task, I am using this one here to add 90 days to the original date. So you'll find that here under date to add. I've done difference where we calculate the, the difference between two dates. Okay, So if you wanted to send an email reminder a day before the event, you calculate one day from today's date and the event date. So if it equals to one, now we know to send an email or SMS as a reminder to let them know, hey, the event is tomorrow because we're calculating the difference in days. You can also calculate, you know, in different quantity here. So it doesn't have to be days. It can be weeks, you know, months, quarters. So you have options here as well. To me, days is always a little bit more precise. Uh, is it possible to run a task on demand from the website instead of from the it's not possible to run on demand from the website unfortunately so if you want to run it on demand it has to be uh, within the caspio platform but then it kind of goes against what the task does it's supposed to be automated right so you ideally want to i mean i've only used on demand for testing honestly i'm trying to think if there's ever a time where I needed something, an actual production application to use on demand in the back end. Normally, I would just always have this automated to run daily or monthly or weekly. Because um, then it defeats the purpose, I would say. Um, but I can see why on the front end, sometimes you may want to run it on demand. I can see why. There is no way to run it on demand. Let me think. The only on-demand thing that you can do is with triggers, not tasks. So based on submitting something or updating something, then you can have something else happen in a different table. But not with the task because it's event-based, right? That's how task, tasks operate. But good question there, Stephen. <laughs> good question. I, yeah, I'll ask around and see if anybody else knows if it's, if it's possible to do something, but not to my knowledge. Okay, so I will make this available as a download um, pretty quickly here after our live stream because it's a very simple, simple app to uh, to download and provide the link to it. So if you just give me a little bit of time and come back to the video, maybe in the afternoon, uh, you'll be able to see a download link underneath um, the video in the description. So, well, I hope that was useful. I won't keep you any longer than we need to. So if you want to see something else in the live stream. Send me an email with a specific use case, even if it's, you know, most most people who don't have a database background struggle with setting up the tables. Now, I'm not going to build all the tables with all the fields, but I can at least provide you with the structure in the live streams. And I always like those uh, suggestions because I think people learn a lot from knowing how to set up database uh, tables and complex many to many, one to many. So if, if you have an idea or a vision or something that you want to create, but you're not sure how to set up the tables initially because that really is the critical point in Caspio or any database driven platform is to set up the tables correctly initially. So if you just give me a use case for what you need to do, I can come back with the basic structure of the tables, at least for the foundation, so that you know how to wire all the tables together with primary keys and foreign keys. Those are always useful uh, topics. But I'm, I'm guessing that most, most people in today's live stream um, already uh, well beyond that point, but just letting you know. Maybe you have a second project that you need to work on or a different app. All right. Thank you all so much for your time. Always appreciate your attendance. Uh, if there's anything else that you want to see, send me an email. I always make that available um, as part of the live stream. So if there's something you'd like, like to see, I'm here. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. Thank you, Judith. King Kapo, Josh, and Brian, all the regulars that keep coming back. Have a good rest of the week, and we'll see you in uh, 
and not next week, but the week after. We're doing bi-weekly now. So. Thanks, King Capo. Arigato. I know you're, you're in Japan, so... Thanks for staying up. Or I don't know what time it is in Japan right now. So thanks for staying up for the live stream. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a good day. And bye-bye.